Hi, everybody. My name is Ms. Chorba. I'm really glad you're here. Today, we're going to be talking about choosing just right books. I've been working really hard all year to grow as a reader, and the best way to keep on growing over the summer is to read every day. And you're going to find that reading is the most fun when what you choose to read is just right for you. Now, because we're going to be talking about choosing books, it would be great if you could watch this video with someone at your home who will be helping you to choose books over the summer. But if they're busy right now, that's okay. Instead, you can talk to a stuffy, or you can talk to a pet, or you can call a friend on the phone, like me. And remember, you can talk in whatever language you feel most comfortable speaking. Okay, let's get started. Okay, students. Let's start thinking about choosing just right books. You probably have some experience with this already, choosing books in your classroom for IDR, or choosing books at your school library to take home, or at the public library. Hmm, what do you think about when you're choosing a just right book? Turn and talk to your partner about that. Okay, students, I heard a lot of great thinking out there. Some kids said that they look at the front cover and the back cover and a few of the pictures inside the book to see if it looks like it's an interesting book for them. Some kids said that they look to see if they've read other books with the same characters. And other kids said that they read a few of the pages to see if the words are easy for them to read and if they understand what's happening in the book. Those are all great things to do when you're looking for a just right book. Books that are just right for you are books you're going to find interesting, and you can read all the words, and you understand what's happening. So, how do you know if a book is too easy? And how do you know if a book is too hard? Turn and talk to your partner. You might have said that a book is too easy if it only has pictures, or if it has mostly pictures and just a few words. You might have also said a book is too easy if you already know all the words and you can read the book really fast. When a book is too easy for you, it's sort of like riding a bike downhill. You don't have to do any work and the bike just keeps moving you along. When you were talking about books that are too hard, you might have said a book is too hard when it has lots of words that are hard to read or that you don't understand. Or a book is too hard if you can't figure out what the book is about. When a book is too hard for you, it's like riding a bike uphill. You have to do so much work just to make that bike move a little bit. Just right books are not too easy and they're not too hard. You have to do a little bit of work but you can manage it just fine. Reading a just right book is like riding a bike on a flat street. You have to work to make the pedals move, but it's pretty easy to keep moving forward. And you have fun while you're doing it. So why is it important to read just right books? Turn and talk to your partner. I heard a lot of great reasons out there for why it's important to read just right books. I heard that it's important because it just makes reading more fun. It also is important because you understand what you read and so you learn more. It also helps you to get better at reading just by practicing. All of those things are right. Choosing interesting books that you can read and that you can understand will make reading more fun. Okay. So now I'm going to model for you how I choose a just right book. I want you to pay close attention 
to what I do and also to what I'm thinking as I'm finding a just right book for me. I'm going to start with this book first. I'm going to look at the front cover and the back cover. I noticed that the title of this book is Big Cats and the author is Bruce Johnson. This book looks really interesting to me. I like the topic. I'm very interested in big cats. And I think the picture on the front is pretty cool. The back cover also has some information that tells me more about what's going to be inside the book. It tells me that I'm going to learn about lions and tigers and cheetahs. Next, I'll read a few pages to see if this book is just right for me. I'll count any words I don't know using my fingers. See the big cat? It is fast. Go, cat, go. Fast, fast, fast. Hmm, I know all the words on these pages, and they're easy words that I've known for a long time. I also notice that there are only a few words on each page. This book seems a little easy for me, so I'll put it back and pick another one. The title of this book is Fish is Fish, and the author is Leo Leone. I like the picture on the front cover, and I also think that Leo Leone is a pretty cool author. The back cover also tells me a little bit more about what the book might be about. It says, Fish wants to be like his friend Frog and see the world. Hmm, sounds interesting. Next, I'm going to open the book and read a few pages to see if I can read it all by myself. Just as I did with the first book, I'll pay attention to how many words I don't know and I'll count those on my fingers. One morning, the, t the tadpole, tad tadpole, hmm, that word says tadpole, but since I didn't know it right away, I'm going to count it as one. Discov, I don't know that one, that's two, that during the night, he had grown two little legs. Look, he said, try, hmm, I don't know that word, that's three. Look, I am a frog. No, no, that's four, said the mino. I don't think that's right, so that's five. How could you be a frog if only last night you were a little fish just like me? Hmm, I counted five words on this page that I didn't know. If I skip those words, I won't really understand what is happening in the story. I might put this book back for now. I can try reading it again in the future. Or I might ask someone else to read it with me. The name of this book is Tiger in My Soup, and the author is Kashmira Chef. When I'm looking at the cover of this book, I notice that there's a boy using a chair to protect himself from a tiger, and he's also wearing a noodle strainer on his head. That's telling me that this is going to be a silly book, and I really like to read silly and funny books. I also notice that on the back cover, the boy is reading a book. So I'm wondering if he's maybe imagining the tiger from what he read in his book. So just like with the other books, I'm going to read a couple pages and I'm going to notice which words are hard for me and I'm going to count them on my fingers to help me decide if this is a just right book. I drop my spoon. I glance, I glance over at my sister. Help! Grr, my sister grum, grum, grumbles. She hands me a clean spoon. The tiger looks really mad. Hmm, there was a word here in the first sentence that was unfamiliar to me. I think it says glance. I'm not sure what that word means, so I'll count it as one. There was also a word farther down the page, grumbles. It took me a little while to sound that out, so I'll count that one as two, even though I do know what grumbles means. I could read the rest of the words on these two pages, and that means that this book is probably just right for me. Okay, students, what did you notice me do when I was choosing a just right book? Turn to your partner. You might have noticed that I looked at the front cover and the back cover, and I noticed if the book looked interesting to me. 
You might have also noticed that I opened it up and I read a few pages to see if I could read all the words or if there were too many words that were hard for me. You might have also noticed that I counted how many words were hard for me on my fingers and that I was thinking about whether the book was interesting to me and what was going on. So let's look at this chart. It's called Choosing a Just Right Book. And it gives you steps that you might use this summer as you're choosing just right books for you to read on your own. Um, the first thing that you can do is look at the cover. You can look at the pictures. You can read a few pages and count the words that you did not know. You can also check to see if you understand what you read. This chart is also going to be found in your literacy extension packets this week. So you can keep a copy for it of it and you can use it all summer long to help you find just right books. This is another tool that you might use to help you choose just right books. It's called the five finger rule. You might have heard of it. It says what to do. Pick up a book, open the book to any page, put one finger up for each word that you don't know. For one to zero fingers, the book might be too easy for you. Now, I do have to say a couple things about that. Sometimes it's really fun to read books that are easy for you. And if you can read all the words, that's just okay, especially in the summer. But remember, it's also good to challenge yourself. And if you're only reading books that are easy for you, then you aren't gonna get better at reading as quickly. Another thing, you might be reading books that don't have a lot of words on each page. Maybe for your just right level, a book has five to 10 words on each page. And if you're missing one word on each page, that still might make the book a little bit uncomfortable for you. So you'll have to think about what is the right fit for you. Going back to the chart, if you miss one to two words on each page, that's probably a pretty good choice. Probably a book that you can read fairly easily. If you miss three to four words, you can give it a try. It might be a little bit hard, but maybe you can manage through it. You'll have to decide. If there's more than five words that are hard for you on a page, that book is probably too hard for you right now. And if you keep reading Just Right books, pretty soon that book will probably be just right for you also. Okay, students, it's almost time to go get reading. Now, if you are looking for places to find books to read online, the Seattle Public School website has several options. If you go to the SPS website and select Student Family Portals and then click on Academic Tools, you'll see below lots of, you'll see some links that help you find places to read books. One is Tumble Books, another is Kids Read, another one is Pebble Go. You'll also find a link there to the Seattle Public Library. And this year, something special is happening between the Seattle Public Library and Seattle Public Schools. All Seattle Public Schools students can get, um, already have access to a library card. And if you follow the link to the Seattle Public School, I mean, the Seattle Public Library website, and then click on library link, it will take you to a Seattle Public Library library link tutorial that will tell you details about how you can go about getting access to the Seattle Public Library books that are online. You can also have access to Libby, which is an app that has online reading as well. So lots of places that you can read online this summer. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this video was helpful in helping you think about what you can do to make sure that you are choosing books that are interesting to you and books that are easy for you to read. Just write books. One last thing, when this video ends, I hope that you will tell your partner what is something that you are excited to read this summer or what is something that you are excited to read about this summer. Happy reading. Bye-bye.